When I learned that there was a Death Wish 3 game for the Commodore 64, I was like, you mean I get to play as Charles Bronson? Fuck yeah, I love Charles Bronson. Sign me up for that. And then I played the game and... Well, it is somewhat faithful to the Death Wish 3 film, so I guess I could give him credit for that. As you can probably tell from my tone, it's not exactly the most ringing endorsement ever, but I think the game is... alright. Sorta. Anyway, let's get into it. Death Wish 3 for the Commodore 64. First off, I think the graphics in the game look very good. Our hero does look a lot like Charles Bronson's character in the film, Paul Kersey. They even sort of managed to get Bronson's signature mustache in there, so I gotta give him props for that. Is it perfect? No, but at least they made the main character look enough like Charles Bronson that I could tell right away that it's him. Also, there's a good amount of detail in the city streets and the houses especially. I also like the extra details with the citizens and the gang members and the police running around. It's very faithful to the climax of the film. My only complaint with the graphics is that occasionally the good guys and the bad guys sort of look the same, so it's hard to distinguish between them which means that occasionally you'll end up blowing away a good guy and losing points for it. I think it would have worked better if they had given the bad guys a certain color to distinguish them, say red, and the good guys another color, like blue. But aside from that minor gripe, I like the look of the game a lot. Hell, they even managed to put hookers in this game several years before Grand Theft Auto 3, and don't ask me how they got away with that. Hey ladies, mustache ain't the only thing that's hairy. <laughs> anyway, the controls in the game are also pretty good. You can move up, down, left, and right through the city, and you shoot using the spacebar. It's very easy to pick up. My only complaint here is that to enter buildings, you have to hit the return button. I think it would be more intuitive to use the up button, but it's not a deal breaker. While the graphics and controls are good, the gameplay is where the game starts to get a little bit shaky. Your mission in the game is simple. Blow fucking punks away. And that's it. To aid you in this mission, the game gives you four different types of weapons. A pistol, a shotgun, a belt-fed machine gun, and a rocket launcher. And the game starts you out with a rocket launcher, so right there you know it's not going to be any old tactical shooter. No, you're going to turn these fucking punks into greasy stains on the concrete. Also, I love how the medics run up and try to drag the remains away. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Like there'd be anything left of the damn guys after getting blasted with a fucking rocket launcher. Actually, though, it is kind of fun to run through the streets and senselessly mow down about a billion gang members. The only problem, however, is that's the whole game. I'm not kidding. You literally just run through the streets and fucking murder people! Which, to be fair, is a pretty faithful adaptation of the movie, considering that's all Paul Kersey did at the climax of the film. Still, after about five minutes of the carnage, you kind of get bored with it. It becomes very repetitive when you're sitting there going, Oh great, I have to kill another what, like, oh, 50 people? The manual says that you can go into buildings to take out gang leaders and get extra ammo for your weapons. But during all of my gameplay, I only managed to find one shotgun in one of the buildings. And as for the gang leaders, there's so many fucking bangers on the screen at some times that I can't tell who's a leader and who's a grunt. Not to mention that they all go down pretty quickly when you fucking blow them up with a rocket launcher. Navigating through the buildings is also a chore because it's very easy to get lost. The on-screen map doesn't really do a good job of showing you exactly where you are. If you go up or down or left or right a few screens, it can be very difficult to orient yourself with a compass so you can end up going completely in the wrong direction and it'll take you a while to get back on track. Another big problem in both the buildings and the streets is ambushes. When you go from one screen to another, everything goes black for a second. And when everything reappears, you could find yourself in between a bunch of gang members beating the living crap out of you. And there is no way to tell whether or not this is going to happen, so it's pretty much the luck of the draw. I think it would have worked much better if the game gave you a second or two grace period every time you entered a new screen or at the very least flashed a quick warning saying, watch out, there are gang members approaching. However, Bronson's character can take a hell of a lot of damage. He's got a bulletproof vest that can absorb several shots, and he's also probably got a fucking head made out of steel, because look at this. Christ, look how slow that fucking injury meter is going up. I never knew an 800-year-old guy could take that much damage. But then again, it is Charles Bronson, so I wouldn't expect any less out of him. And the sound and the motions he makes when he gets attacked from behind, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh! I think he might be enjoying this a little too much. Romantic liaisons aside, another problem with the game is the civilians. There are times when they'll run right up in front of the gang members or even right next to them, so it's impossible to get a clear shot. And if you blast them, you lose a bunch of points and can even go into the negatives. Not that the score matters all that much in this game, but if the civilians run up with the gang members, you can easily get pinned between all of them and your enemies can use this to their advantage to get in a lot of cheap hits. The police can help you kill some of the bad guys, but if you shoot any civilians, they'll turn on you. 
and the only way to knock down the negative points and get back in their good graces is to kill more gang members. One other small problem I had with the game was the lack of a melee weapon. While the game does give you a fair amount of ammo, you can burn through it very quickly after killing 5 billion punks. And once you run out of ammo, that's it. Bronson just stands there with his hands spread. Although to be honest, I do kind of like the expression on his face like, Well what the fuck do you want me to do about it, pal? You're the dumb fuck who wasted all the ammo. Still, I think it would have helped if they had given him a bat, or nunchucks, or a tire iron, or something to fight back with once he ran out of ammo. Shit, let him use his fucking mustache if he has to. But it's all good, he can take a billion hits anyway. One small feature that I did like is the fact that you can go into buildings and shoot out of the windows. To do this, you have to go up to a window and press W. Then you enter a first person shooter mode. It doesn't really do all that much for the game, but I did find it to be an interesting feature. Oh, and here's another nice feature. A TV can take a direct blast from a fucking rocket launcher, but a person can't. Christ, that's some sturdy TV! From what I've read about the game, one of its biggest problems is that it has no ending. That's right, you can go through this game virtually forever, mowing down criminals until your character drops dead or the game crashes. Couldn't they have maybe, just maybe, added an ending in there to wrap things up? Nope, I guess not. As for the music, at the beginning of the game you're given a choice of effects or music. And although I chose mostly effects for my footage, I do have to say that I like the musical track a lot. Here, listen. Despite the tune looping every now and then, I think Ben Daglish did a good job on it. This game is certainly playable, but the repetitive action and the lack of an ending make it something that you probably won't want to spend more than a few minutes on. So in conclusion, I'd recommend this game, but with some reservations. But if you hate games with no definitive conclusion, then I'd skip it. One other small point. I'd love to see Richie from My Ass Has Worms do a review of this game. This seems exactly like the kind of game that he might want to cover. And I could just imagine him doing it in his voice. Yeah, and, 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 and you blow people away with a rock, rocket launcher? <laughs> Take that, you fucking pickle sniffer! Anyway, I just wanted to throw a quick shout out to Richie at My Ass Has Worms. I really love your channel, and please, man, keep making videos because I love them. And if you haven't seen his videos yet, please, by all means, go see them because they're fucking hilarious. Anyway, that's it for this video. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Until next time, this is Filming Stuff, signing off. Hey ladies, mustache ain't the only thing that's hairy. <laughs>